they have a very strong compressive bite. They have the capacity to lacerate your skin and bite parts of you off. Wolves are natural predators, and working with them is not for the faint-hearted. Chris Edrington from Steve Martin's Working Wildlife trains wolves for film and television. We supply animals for the entertainment industry. I used to call it the film industry, but that's sort of antiquated. It's work in front of a camera, uh, where someone is paying us to film an animal that's part of content that somebody else is selling. I would say 90% of the work that I personally do is in front of a camera that way. Mark, stay, stay, good boy. Depending on the economy, sometimes 10% of the work or more will be event related. Uh, America's funny that people have disposable income and somebody occasionally wants a lion at their party or a wolf or a baby animal of some kind. Uh, these are gray or timber wolves, and name is interchangeable. They come in different colors, dark like these two, or, or gray like the other one who's wandering around. We have one that's sort of a lighter color too. These particular guys, their bloodline is from North America. Chris's most famous animal pupils starred in the iconic movie Dances with Wolves. The movie's wolf character, Two Socks, was actually played by two different wolves, Buck and Teddy, who looked so similar only their trainers could tell them apart. Those wolves uh, lived here. The owner actually had to double the actor Kevin Costner for a couple scenes that, where they interacted. This group of wolves here, we've done uh, True Blood, uh, Vampire Diaries, Teen Wolf, where we did three seasons of Game of Thrones, and then a bunch of other movies. Kevin Card. Chris has worked with a variety of dangerous animals, and while he makes them seem quite safe and friendly, wolves remain wild predators. I have enjoyed everything I work with. I work a little bit with our tiger. It's a solitary animal and I like it, but I like these guys a lot. They give you love. Uh, all animals show some emotion, but wolves show love more than any other animal. You'd have to be devoid of a consciousness not to see that and see how they show that to you. It's uh, quite wonderful. Hello, my love. Come on. Come here. Training wolves is about making the animals familiar with the human world rather than teaching them clever tricks. Quite frankly, as an animal trainer, I find I don't spend so much time training an animal but habituating it to the odd things that occur in society. And on a movie set, we have booms and flags and all sorts of things that aren't natural. So we have to get our animals used to that. We have to get them used to loading in a truck or a trailer uh, or whatever cage if we have to go on an airplane. And, and we try to make that so it's, it's normal and not stressful. Going into a pen with wolves is dangerous. And no matter how close an owner is to their animals, there will always be a risk. The two uh, black guys here are a part of an older group. When we got them, we had a lot of film projects at the time, and they worked a lot, and we just happened to build a really good rapport. The other wolf, he's just two, and so he hasn't worked quite as much, and I don't have as good a rapport with him as these guys. I can still work with him, if uh, a filmmaker wants to shoot with him, we'll go do whatever we have to. But I, I just, these guys have known me better and I've done more with them and we've traveled more places. And they're older too, so they know that I'm the source of fun more. <laughs> He's a young punk. In a couple more years, he might be standing over here because he knows that the rubs are good and maybe we'll go for a walk out into the universe. Dog trainer and canine behavioral specialist, Michael Chill, is known for his expertise with wolves and wolf behavior. Dogs absolutely evolved from wolves, and they share 99.9% .9 of the same genetic makeup. They can interbreed and make fertile offspring, so that's really, from a species perspective, that proves a close relation. Our adult dogs have the similar behavior to a five-month-old wolf. Our adult dogs are social with strange dogs, 
typically, are still eager to learn, have a prey drive, but not a serious enough one to really do that much hunting and killing, our wolves evolve beyond that. Once they become adults, they will accept their own family members, but they're highly aggressive to outside wolves with which they are unfamiliar. Uh, they are quite adept predators. They're highly territorial. So when we then go back to the wild to try to redo this and take a wild animal into captivity, we do not have in a wolf a dog with an exotic look. We have a wild predator. Despite the dangers, extreme animal owners often push the envelope. Hello, baby boy. And not only do R.C. and Sharon Bridges keep a bison as a pet, they also keep and breed wolves and wolf dogs. We do sell our wolves. You know, we have uh, so many people that really enjoy them. And a lot of them, they do make house pets out of them. We have lots of happy customers. And you know, one person said, you can't keep a wolf in the house. And Sharon replied back, we keep a buffalo in our house. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell me we can't keep a wolf in the house. Yeah. <laughs> the most worried I was one time, uh, we had wolf puppies. And of course, when they're born, the mamas are real protective. And she come running, and I knew I was fixing to get tore up by her. Because she'd been real aggressive toward me ever since she had the puppies. And when she come after me, it grabbed her and threw her on the ground and held her down. And, uh, and then I, she was growling and stuff, but that, anyway, I just, I just backed off and she was fine. Wolves live by a strict and ruthless social order, and owners must establish themselves as the pack leader or risk a vicious alpha challenge. R.C., of course, as the dominant male of the family, he takes charge, and whenever he feels like he's comfortable with me jumping in, because he won't let me jump in and do anything without his okay first. The way we do them, we keep two to three in a pen, and we never have any problem with them. We do have an alpha problem occasionally, and I got rid of a female lately because she was causing too many fights. I raise these guys, and because of how I've worked with them, I think they view me as the top dog. They live in a sort of interesting structure. Biologists tell us that an alpha male and an alpha female will form, and basically what that means is the dominant pair will be the only one that will be allowed to breed. And uh, nature is really cruel. Sometimes the other ones breed, but if they have a successful litter, the alpha male and female will just kill it. The way we raise them, these are very nice, but they, they're still... You can't take the jungle out of the boy. Nature designs them to be a certain way, and they're wild animals. Therein lies the difference between a domestic dog and, and this wolf. Even though this guy is just rolling on his back and rubbing his belly, he's still a dangerous animal. With a bite that can break bones, wolves may look just like exotic dogs, but can they make good pets? I work with them all the time, I see them every day. No, they're horrible pets. I would never bring one to my house uh, because I know they would be enthralled by my leather couch and they would perforate it with holes, they would rip up my carpet, they would tear down my blinds. I have faith that they would do that. I might be able to get them not to do that when I'm there, but if I walk away, I have faith that they will completely destroy everything when I'm not there. Conversely, when I've had domestic dogs, I train them so that I could trust them. We've basically trained our wild animals not only to behave, but just to be able to convey safely around society. But uh, yeah, no, the wild animals I work with, I would never recommend as uh, having a, as a pet. Well, personally, for me and RC both, uh, for us, I think it's great. But it's, with these kind of animals, it's not meant for just anybody to pick up and say, okay, I wanna make them a pet. You have to be really dominant. You have to be their leader. If you're not gonna be top charge, then no, then they're not gonna be safe for a pet. In spite of the danger, many, including RC and Sharon, still believe that a 100-pound predator can make a good house pet. We bring all the wolves in the house. Um, you know, we play with them, take pictures with them. Certain ones, we'll let um, the grandkids play with. There's some of them that we won't let the grandkids play with. 
Ours make a good pet. Just like all animals, depending on how they're raised from beginning, really, is what makes good pets. When I got in the wolf business, I thought I had a mean animal coming to me. And it wound up being the sweetest animal I've ever been around. And we always hear the stories about the big bad wolf. They're just unbelievably a gentle animal. I do think they're dangerous when you let them run in a pack. I find you get what you put out. Conversely, if you have a child, a human, and you put it in a closet and 10 years later open the door, what are you gonna have? Uh, if you have a bear or a lion or a wolf and you raise it appropriately and you get it used to the trappings of humanity and you take it everywhere and you teach it things and you love it, you will have a great animal that's capable of safely operating with other people in human society. Don't let their looks deceive you. Wolves may resemble the family dog, but they are an apex predator, capable of taking down large prey and causing serious physical injury and even death. If you're going to house a wolf and they were able to live in a wilderness area and come back to visit, but they certainly weren't put in a captive situation, that's kind of ideal. My wolves became my wolves because people thought they could turn them into dogs with proper training and found out the hard way doesn't work. You cannot train a wolf to be a dog.